Hey, you wanna know what's crazy? Keep on watching. Are all professional sports rigged? Watch this video and let me know what you think. I was like, listen, the closeout game is the hardest game in your life. And they be like, why? And I can't say. <laughs> can't say. I can't say, but I'm like, no, fam. Listen, like, this is the hardest game you'll ever play in your life. Shit, nah, I'll tell it. Like, like, <laughs> go ahead. You gotta be the, the vehicle. The vehicle. You gotta right. be the vehicle. No, it's real though. No, no, I remember we were about to play game seven, uh, 2012. So we were about to play the Celtics or whatever. Game seven. So I'm hyped as hell. I'm like, yeah, bro, we got a game seven. Like, who out the damn? Like, this gonna be lit. So Elden's like, you know, we gonna have to win by 15, just win by one. Mm. So I'm like, what you mean? He's like, bro, this is the NBA, it's entertainment. Like, LeBron is in the Heat are waiting. Would you rather watch the Celtics or the Sixers play the Heat? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm on a team. I wouldn't even watch <laughs> the Sixers play the Heat type shit. Like, so we get in this game, you know how much money the NBA is going to lose. Like, this, you know, type shit. I'm like, I guess, like, a decent amount. It's like, would you watch that game next week if it was the Heat versus the Sixers? I'm like, nah. It's like, okay then. So, like... That's why I'm, I'm telling you, take M's and M's from this. I'm like, what? He's like, millions of memories. Because this is entertainment. My guy. You know what? See, I like that you brought this up. Because they really be showing the truth in these movies and these different shows. All right, so you asked if space is water. Yes, it is. Literally. So y'all see how in SpongeBob, how they underwater? But you know, Sandy, she ain't supposed to be living in the water. She's supposed to be living on dry land. But as you can see, she's in water, but she's living in a dome. And when she goes out into the water, she's wearing a space suit. <laughs> so let's talk about it. As everybody knows, NASA started off in the ocean and supposedly stopped exploring it. But see, what y'all don't know is actually they never left the water. They practice in the water. They shoot their fake space videos in the water. So as y'all know, astronauts practice their space struts in the water. They be like this. <laughs> but actually, they practicing for their videos that they finna shoot in the water to pretend to be in space. See, because we don't live on no globe Earth. We live underneath the firmament. The same firmament that God speak about in the Bible. That same firmament that Sandy in on SpongeBob. See, God said when he made the firmament, he divided the waters which were underneath the firmament and the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. He said when he made the firmament, he spread it out like a molten looking glass. And he set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be moved. So God told us that the earth isn't moving at all. But science is saying that we move in thousands of miles per hour. How is that so? See, because God said in Romans 3 and 4, let him be the truth and every man a liar. So just like Sandy and SpongeBob, how she's underneath a dome, like a snow globe dome underwater, that's literally us. Stop letting these people lie to y'all. NASA is fake as hell. Shoot, the founder of NASA is best friends with Disney. They a whole movie production team. And what's the most favorite thing that Disney loved to show? that little dome shape before they start any shows that's the first thing they show just like old dude remember he went into the ocean and when he went down there there was a lake of water in the ocean there was literally a lake in the ocean remember god said he put the waters above the firmament and underneath us and as soon as that man found that body of water in water and came out showing that he was killed y'all really think this man discovered this showed the world got in his plane and just died no that was a setup they would do anything they can to stop people from spreading the truth to believe they lies see because how come in the 1920s we ain't never seen the earth but they came up with the same globe image that they are showing to us today how we never even seen the earth and it's the same exact picture as the one that y'all are showing us today. 
the same fake CGI animated pictures of y'all in the water. That's why that astronaut man drowned. How you drown in space? That's because they shooting their videos in water to make that little jumping effect that they be doing. And then they just using green screen to pretend that they are somewhere that they are not. NASA is literally the biggest frauds spending billions of dollars to manipulate us to hide the truth. And I know people be thinking, why do astronauts have a star on the Walk of Fame in Hollywood? That's because they the biggest actors there is sitting here fooling the whole world. So you ask me, is space water? And I'm letting you know right now, space is 100% water. I'm starting to buy the idea that we are actually living under a firmament and it blows my mind every time I think of it because it kind of makes sense. It, that gets me wondering what's beyond the water thing. This next discovery comes from a guy who moved into a studio apartment in England. The guy claimed to have moved into the apartment without even viewing the place and on arrival he would discover something pretty disturbing. So here's the apartment I moved into last week. It's pretty small, pretty nice. Rent was pretty cheap, so I moved in without even viewing the place. And then when I got here, I realized why the rent was so cheap. The guy then goes on to give a tour of the apartment, and after a while, this sort of trap door on the floor can be seen. Got a bathroom, pretty standard. And then we look down here. What's this? That's definitely a handle. So I figured, you know, a bit of underfloor storage. So let's lift this up. Goes in pretty deep. Featured directly under this guy's apartment is some sort of dungeon looking basement. Walking in the steps into the dungeon. Come down. Or well, you can see a corridor going off straight to the front. I'm gonna try some graffiti on the wall. Down here, this place is strange. There's like a brick seat or bed. Compared to the rest of the apartment, the area itself is pretty big, featuring many large rooms and corridors. What exactly this area was used for is unclear. I don't know if I should be scared or maybe I should be happy because I found more space to myself. So. Black Mirror is becoming a reality. The latest paper, the one that happened even after this, which is already better, uses stable diffusion, uses the thing that you use to make art. Like what should a thing that you use to make art have anything to do with reading your brain? But of course it goes further. So in this one, they said, can they understand um, the inner monologue, the things you're saying to yourself in your own mind? Mind you, by the way, when you dream, your dream, like your visual cortex runs in reverse, so your dreams are no longer safe. Um, but we'll try this. So they had people watch a video and just narrate what was going on in the video in their mind. So there's a woman, she gets hit in the back, she falls over. This is what the computer reconstructed the person thinking. See a girl, looks just like me, get hit in the back, and then she is knocked off. So our thoughts, like, are starting to be decoded. Yeah, just think about what this means for authoritarian states, for instance. Or if you want to generate images that maximally activate your pleasure sensor, anything else. Okay, but let's keep going, right? To really get the sense of the combinatorics of this. How about, can we go from Wi-Fi radio signals, you know, sort of like the Wi-Fi routers in your house, they're bouncing off radio signals that work sort of like sonar. Can you go from that to where human beings are, to images? So what they did is they had, um, you know, a camera looking at a space with people in it. Um, that's sort of like coming in from one eye. The other eye is the radio signals, so sonar from the uh, Wi-Fi router. And they just learned to predict, like, this is where the human beings are. Then they took away the camera. So all the AI had was the language of radio signals bouncing around a room. And this is what they're able to reconstruct. Real-time 3D pose estimation, right? So suddenly, AI has turned every Wi-Fi router into a camera that can work in the dark, specially tuned for tracking living beings. So these tech companies can turn our routers 
into cameras now. Imagine the personal data they're gonna be selling now. They've probably been doing this and we're just finding out. You ever think of something or someone in that ad or person pops up on your phone? All I'm saying is maybe it's not such a coincidence as we- It's the mom. There's nobody there. Where? Point. It's a, a monster. Point. A monster. Where is it? Point to where it is. Over there, mama. Where? Over there, mama. A monster? Hi, mama. Over there, mama. What's he doing? Over Who are you saying goodnight to? Who? Good night. Trevor, there's no one up there. Who's up there? Show me. Who's up there? Who's up there? Trevor, there's me? no one up there. He's been talking to that vent and then he was blowing it kisses. And I'm creeped out now. Like, seriously, I'm not joking. I'm so creeped out right now. No, he's kind of sad me. Clean my room. Try to clean mommy. Clean my room. Think it's savvy. Oh, clean my room. Wow, that is so crazy. I mean, isn't it amazing how kids can see other entities? Somehow, maybe we are lucky that we don't see them because, I mean, if kids are really scared, then it means these creatures are scarier than we can imagine. An Instagram account captured what appears to be Till Lindman from Ramstein shape-shifting his eyes into a reptilian form. I first saw this in contact This could be fake, I mean like not from the original video. So I went over to the original video in the concert in Paris 2017. Indeed you can find this in 30 minutes and 22 seconds. Well I'm gonna play the original video and you guys tell me what you think. Let's take a look at the original video. Right now. So pay attention, you got his eyes pretty normal, right? And then, boom, what the heck? I'm gonna zoom in and replay the video. Pay very close attention. What is going on here, guys? Look at that. Oh my gosh. I wanna know your thoughts. Is this the real deal or is it maybe fake CGI? You tell me. Realizing my brother oh my is possessed. God. Are you possessed, bro? What the heck? What the hell are you? He bro. was being so weird. What the heck is Wait wrong with for you? it. Stop being like that. What the? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to wake him up? <laughs> This girl was freaking out when her sister got out of bed and started sleepwalking. Stop staring at me like that. Alexis! Mom! Mom! She's just staying here staring at me. It's crazy. Hey. Hey, go lay down. Yo! <laughs> Sorry, I can't. What the hell? That scared me for a minute. I'm sorry, Paul, but I have to mention it. The weird nibbling of the baby the other day. What's up with that? Uh, you're, you're a parent. I'm a parent. There is not a normal parent who goes over to a stranger's child and, like, mocks, eats their upper shoulder to say hello or show affection. It's bizarre. And I realize as you get older, your behavior may change, but really what happens is you're, you lose some inhibitions. You don't lose that many inhibitions. I've known a lot of elderly politicians. They don't behave like that. Must I point out, in his daughter's diary, which we're not allowed to discuss, because why? Why again? Um, she says that they took inappropriate showers together when she was a child, she and Joe Biden. We don't look to have to look very far to see his string of inappropriate behavior with women, uh, adult women, not to mention somewhat younger ones with this hair smelling. I, it's just, it well, doesn't make I don't me feel comfortable. There's probably some The kid's reaction said it all. This is why you should be careful about what you post on social media. So this is 19-year-old Wesley Pisano Sansaram, and he was shot and killed literally just this week. 
Basically what happened is a bunch of Brazilian gangs are targeting people who are doing what's called insta bragging. Insta bragging is when you flaunt your wealth and your riches or whatever you may have on social media. Pisano did this a lot and even grew a large following of over 100,000 followers. He gave out tricks and tips on how to get better trading cryptos on his YouTube channel. But I guess some people don't care. Jealousy got the best of these Brazilian gangs and they unfortunately took his life because of it. I think the saddest part to me is once I went through his Instagram, I realized all of this flexing and flaunting was fairly new. He just started doing it. But I guess for some people, just doing it once is enough. And please remember that not everyone following you is there to support you. Some people are trying to keep tabs because they're jealous of you. Want to move it? Come back, 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 come back,
This should definitely be used in the court of law. I am so angry and I'm so sick. Strap in for this one, guys, because this is a hard one. A trial has recently begun for a South Carolina couple that is being accused of murdering their 13-year-old disabled daughter by leaving her in the back of a smoldering hot vehicle for over five hours. She was left in a 135-degree vehicle for five hours and 40 minutes, to be exact. Unfortunately, 13-year-old Christina did not make it, and when paramedics arrived, she was covered in heat blisters by the time she was pulled out of the car. Surveillance footage was showed to the jury from their own home security cameras, and in this surveillance footage, you can see them place Christina inside of the car at 11.15 a.m. They closed the door behind them and left Christina in that car until 5 p.m. when paramedics finally pulled her out. So let's get into some of the details of this case, but if you have not seen the surveillance footage, I highly recommend going back to this comment and seeing the video where I posted the surveillance footage. On August 5th of 2019, police were called to the home of Larry and Rita after Rita's 13-year-old disabled daughter was reportedly not breathing. When police and paramedics arrived, they found 13-year-old Christina deceased in the back of the car, covered in blisters, and very obvious that she had vomited all over herself. At this point, Rita had told police that after they had put Christina inside of the car, they went back into Larry's house to grab cigarettes, and then when she came back outside, the car was locked. She claims that they quickly went to go get a new set of keys, and by the time they returned back, Christina was already dead inside of the back seat. But for some reason, that still makes no sense to me, they completely forgot that they had home surveillance cameras right in front of the house that captured the entire thing. The jury was shown a total of four hours and 15 minutes of surveillance footage from the moment they placed Christina inside of the car to the moment the paramedics pulled her out. There is just a little over an hour of footage missing as the camera did not pick up any motion from the time that they went inside or from the time that they left the house. So let's go over the surveillance footage. At 11.16 a.m., you can very clearly see that Larry is carrying Christina and he places her in the backseat of the car. And I know all of the documents say that he just places her in the back seat, but in my opinion, it looks like he kind of tosses her in the back seat. They closed the doors and left Christina in the car. And again, they did not turn the car on and there was no AC on in the car. They then proceeded to spend roughly 30 minutes sitting on the front porch talking. And in Larry's testimony recently, he stated that apparently Rita had recently cheated on him, so they were arguing about that. They go inside of the house for roughly an hour until they come back outside around 1.45 p.m. They spend roughly 15 minutes talking outside, hugging and kissing up on each other until they go inside. And Larry testified that at this moment, they went inside to go have relations. They did not come back out until over an hour later, around 3 p.m. At 3.03 p.m., Rita walks off of the porch and walks around the car, checking all of the doors and kind of making obvious that all of the doors are locked. So whether this whole thing was accidental or not, what we do know is that this surveillance footage shows at 3 p.m., Rita knows for sure that Christina is locked inside of the back of this hot car. Rita and Larry then spend roughly 15 minutes trying to very gently open the windows of the car. You could tell they didn't even really put that much work into it. And then they go up on the porch and sit on this porch swing for about 15-20 minutes. Around 3.45 p.m., the couple leaves the home and they claim that at this point they went to go find extra keys to open the car. And they do not return back until roughly an hour later at 4.44 p.m. You can see in the video that when they pull up to the house, they don't seem to be in any rush whatsoever to get Christina out of the vehicle. And they even get out of the vehicle and look inside of the windows, I guess, just to make sure that she's dead. When Christina was finally pulled out of the car by paramedics, her body temperature was 109 degrees and she was covered in heat blisters. The paramedics also stated that it was very obvious that she had vomited and choked on the vomit as she couldn't move. It was very obvious that she passed away from a heat stroke, 
and investigators even stated that her body was at an advanced stage of decomposition because of the temperature inside of the vehicle. Even though her COD obviously just says heat stroke, she was essentially cooked to death as the temperature inside of that vehicle was 135 degrees. Now, our lovebirds, Rita and Larry, have since broken up, but they do maintain their innocence, claiming that they thought the car was on and that the AC was on. But in my opinion, after seeing that surveillance footage, I think it's very obvious that this was intentional. Now, their trial has begun on August 29th of 2023, and so far there has been three days of testimonies. So I will obviously be making another part to this video as soon as I am able to get through all of these testimonies. So bear with me, it's quite a lot. Also, really quickly before I do end this video, I would like to take a moment to send my sincerest condolences to any loved ones of Christina. I know there are lots of people in this world that loved her, and it's extremely unfortunate that the one person she trusted the most is the one person who hurt her the most. They found a pile of children's shoes and bones in this cave. This is Mel Howard Cave, and this is the creepiest cave I've ever seen. It was owned by the Freemasons. As you can see their logo on top of the cave, it was supposedly used for annual meetings and get-togethers for members from all around the world. It was being used since 1938. Before the Freemasons took control of the cave, the local Native Americans would say that specific cave was a passageway to the underworld. Coincidence? I think not. And supposedly is where they held demonic rituals. Knowledge of the cave started spreading in 2019. That's when they decided to put the gate up, saying that they were afraid for people safety because they did have an underwater canal under the cave and didn't want anybody to get hurt or maybe they just didn't want y'all to find anything because a blogger on youtube who was exploring the cave found a pile of bones and children's shoes there are one i think these are old shoes don't touch them i'm not gonna touch them let's just back there see the bones Now, an excuse from one of the members that was given was it was most likely either animals that brought the shoes and bones in, like small critters, or the underground canal flooded and brought them in. They also blamed the vandals who would break into the cave for their shoes and bones being there. But people believe something more sinister is going on. I mean, why wouldn't they? Over 500,000 kids go missing every year in the United States. I'm not gonna lie, it just hit you. But what do you think? Was this cave just meant for friendly meetups? Or was something more dark going on here? Make sure to hit that follow because my next video will blow your mind. That's a big number. The Paranormal Chick here. Take a look at this video. This video is regarding an urban legend that comes out of the state of Texas, specifically San, San Antonio. And how the legend goes is that around 1938, a school bus full of children became stuck on top of a railroad. Tragically, that bus was hit by a train and all aboard were killed. Now, current day, people state that the area is haunted. And if your vehicle becomes stuck atop of the railroad, that it would be pushed off by unseen forces. Antonio, Texas with the haunted railroad tracks. Gonna see if this works. You put baby powder on the window or on the car and after the kids push you over the train tracks, you're supposed to see fingerprints or handprints all over. And you put it in neutral. Um, and it pushes. Yeah, so out here you put the vehicle in neutral, supposedly, and uh, some kids that died out here push you over the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if it happens, if it works or not. The vehicle in neutral. And I'm going to turn it off. And we're moving. Oh my god. <laughs> we're like getting pushed over right now. The car is off. Car is off. My foot's right here. Nothing's, no, nothing's on. on. Oh, oh we went over. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Shit, man. Ah! This is the most dangerous book in the world. The book is called Al Azif. It talks about black magic in the ancient civilizations that used to live on Earth millions of years ago before humans ever existed. And they were satanic civilizations, meaning that before humans, there were jinns living on Earth, which is mentioned in the Quran, that jinns used to live before Adam and Eve. This book tells you about those satanic civilizations, and what's even more scary and dangerous is that the book tells you how to communicate with these creatures, which is just disturbing. And it is known that the average age of the jinn is 5,000 years. All the copies of the Al-Azif in the world, and many of them translated in different languages, 
were burned completely and there is only one copy of this book on earth and it's located in the Vatican Library. And nobody can reach this copy without a specific and secret permit. The author of the Al-Azif is Abdullah Haladrad. He was a Yomeni poet and was born in 685 and passed away in 735. All the people around him called him the crazy poet or the crazy era man. And apparently he used the magic from the jinns he learned in the book in a very bad way. And he was then punished with a terrible punishment by the jinns. They sent a creature that cut off his private parts and took the rest of his body and immediately disappeared. So I don't know about you, but I never want to read this book. Okay, now I'm curious. Like, I want to read this book now. So could you tell me about this fork? Uh, yeah, this fork looks pretty innocent and everything, but it actually has a quite dark story. This is one of the forks that Jeffrey Dahmer used for cannibalism. Now, in his apartment, when they came into his apartment, they realized that, okay, we have some bodies, we got some really bad stuff here, but they realized cannibalism was involved. Therefore, the silverware became crime scene evidence, could not be destroyed. So it was locked up until 2021, until it was released last year to Jeffrey Dahmer's father, Lionel. This is one of the four that are in existence. We know where three of them are. One of them's out in the wild. We have no idea where it is, but this is one. Wow. That's awesome. That's crazy. I mean, I, I don't know what's crazy. Uh, the fact that there's a fork that symbolizes cannibalism or the fact that it's on sale. I don't know which is more crazier than the other. Something weird has just been discovered about the missing flight MH370. It happened a while ago. Many of you know it here, but this has just been found. Now, I'm no expert, but this is supposed to be some sort of satellite imagery of the plane. You can see it flying right here. This is the flight MH370. Now, you're going to see some crazy stuff start to happen. There's this object, number one, that starts circling the plane. All of a sudden, there is a second object and then a third object. You see them swirling in this like organized fashion around the plane. You can see the satellite image changing positions. And I really, I'm at a, literally at a loss for words. Like what the heck? These things are circling the plane like they're trying to do something. And then all of a sudden, the plane is going to go poof and disappear. Look at it's just gone. What the heck is happening? Is this legit? Like what the freak is happening? Strange sighting in Alaska has a lot of people scratching their heads this morning. Take a look. An Alaska Bureau of Land Management worker in Fairbanks was checking out the ice on Wednesday when he saw this. He recorded something moving up the river. Now this video was posted to the bureau's Facebook page. They admitted they're not sure exactly what it is. Then they added, "We're letting you be the judge." Um Whoa. <laughs> and it's not it's not something that has that ice on it? Well, that's what I thought, but then look how it curves and it's all attached. So so I, my, my first thought would be a sturgeon. Yeah. But, but sturgeons dwell at the bottom of lakes. I it don't... looks like an alligator, which we know it, it isn't. They don't live It does look like an alligator. You know, but though. it looks like yeah. a cold water alligator. Whatever that is, it's so massive. The ocean is just too much.
This next video comes from Nathan Hughes, who not only enjoys being an actor and a photographer, but also a dog owner. One day, while sitting at home, Nathan notices one of his dogs acting strange. Molly, who was resting on the couch, began to tremble as though she were seeing something incredibly frightening. Being a lover of dogs, he was deeply unsettled by Molly's behavior. If only he had known what she was seeing. This is the video he took. Molly, do you want a biscuit? Molly. What's wrong? What's wrong? What are you looking at? What is it? Molly? What is it? Are you okay? What is it? Did you eat your biscuit? No. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I don't eat your biscuit. It's okay. She appears to be seeing something that Nathan can't. Unlike most dogs, who either growl or bark at something that doesn't appear to be there, Molly trembles in fear. As one viewer had commented, just imagine what that spirit looks like for her to be trembling like that. Although we can't be certain if it's something paranormal, there's no denying that Molly's reaction is very unsettling. Now, it could be the case that she's having a seizure, but according to a viewer, if that were so, then she wouldn't be responding to Nathan's voice. In the video, we can see her looking back and forth when being spoken to, suggesting that she's able to respond, which is often impossible for an animal having a seizure to do. So then, what exactly is causing her to react this way? As with most videos, this one remains a mystery. If that was the case, then what do we expect after breaking with our mind? Is water going to fall down, or I mean, what is the expectation? Because we don't know what's beyond there. What is one of the creepiest things a kid has ever said to you? I'll go first. When my daughter was almost three years old, she told me and my godmother a story. We were at my godmother's house, and we were working on a Halloween slash birthday costume for my daughter. We're taking her measurements and cutting fabric and she randomly looks at us and she asks us where her mom is. I tell her, you're being crazy. I'm your mama. What are you talking about? I thought maybe she was confused because I call my mom mom. So maybe she's looking for her grandma. Well, I'm saying I'm your mama. She cuts me off and says, oh, she's dead. Me and my godmother are looking at each other like, what? My daughter told us my mom is unalive and I live with my aunt. And where's my aunt? Hold on. What are you talking about? She straight up tells us that she was alive in 1438. She's probably telling us some weird shit about a past life. I start questioning her. She keeps making sounds that are like Thessaloniki, Thessaloniki. And she says that her name is Arthnasanya. I'm writing everything down because I'm like, this is freaking crazy and I don't want to forget it. Because she didn't speak very well, I don't know what the hell she was talking about. I tried to do research on the places and the names that she mentioned, but I couldn't find anything. If there is a town called Nesloniki or something in 1438, let me know. She told me her aunt was really mean to her and that her aunt ended up unaliving too. And that was it. She just stopped talking about it. And I kept trying to like, ask her more questions and she wouldn't say anything else. It was just like she had this little brain moment that just sped off a whole bunch of random information and then it completely shut off after that. She's nine now and she has no recollection of any of this. <laughs>
<laughs> Disturbing facts from history you wish you didn't know. One of the most horrifying true stories you'll ever hear has to be that of Russia's Cannibal Island. In the summer of 1933, thousands of Russian citizens were rounded up by police and sent to live on a tiny, swampy island in Siberia's Oba River. The plan was for the deportees to construct a special settlement as part of Joseph Stalin's new social engineering plan to rid Moscow of all undesirable elements. In May, the first 3,000 prisoners were dropped off by barge on Nazino Island, they were given no tools, food or shelter. These were mostly city dwellers who had no farming experience or any skills for surviving outdoors. In a short time, the weather conditions quickly deteriorated with rain, snow and freezing winds sweeping over the island. Even still, more barges kept coming, dropping off even more people. Guards patrolled the icy waters, threatening to shoot anyone who tried to escape. For a while, every four or five days, they would drop off sacks of moldy rye flour as the only food source on the island. The inhabitants would take the flour to the river, mix it with water and drink it. Eating it dry was nearly impossible. Accidentally breathing the flour in its original state could be suffocating. Early on, many people lost their lives by freezing. Some burned alive by sleeping too close to the fires. Others became ill from drinking the brackish water. Things grew far worse for the survivors once starvation set in. Soon, the strongest of the island's prisoners began hunting the weakest members for food. Rumors quickly spread back in Moscow that the island's prisoners had begun eating each other. The experiment ended just 13 weeks after it had begun. Soldiers were sent to evacuate the island. What they found when they got there is beyond a nightmare. Corpses stripped of their flesh littered the tall grass. Skeletal limbs and human organs were discovered hanging from trees. One woman who had been transferred to another camp was missing her calves. That's because some of the prisoners cut them off while she was alive. She only survived because the frigid temperatures kept her alive. Of the 6,700 prisoners brought to Nazino Island, 4,000 went missing or were killed. The events on Russia's Cannibal Island were covered up until 1988, when secret records were finally released to the public. That reminds me of the series Yellow Jackets. Like, that was traumatizing enough. These are creepy things you never knew existed. Okay, so every single one of us will love to go and visit Japan. But if you do, whatever you do, never stay at these hotels in Japan. There are these hotels in Japan that cost only $1 a night to stay in. But there's a disturbing twist. These hotels live stream every single one of your movements to complete random people and strangers. So every single second you're spending in these rooms, you will be live streamed to thousands of people just watching your every movement for no reason at all. They can watch you eat, sleep, bite your nails, or just anything else that you do. But the scariest part about this whole thing is that your identity, your face, and your location is now known by thousands of random strangers. So unless you're a person that likes going to random countries and having your location and identity known by every single person, this might be the place for you to stay. But let's be honest, I don't think anybody wants that. But I know there's some people with a budget that would just get over all of that and pay the dollar. But in my opinion, this is just weird and just kind of disturbing. Yeah. That is so weird. Let's talk about this picture. This is why if I ever have kids, I'll never let them use the bathroom alone. A seven-year-old girl and her mom were headed to Target, and she was getting some clothes for school. Her mom also wanted to grab some snacks for movie night. So while her mom went to go grab popcorn and other snacks, she told her daughter to go pick out clothes for school. When her daughter finally finished and picked out the clothes, she went up to her mom and said something strange happened. A sad pale lady had came up to her, <laughs> telling her that she wished she could have her own daughter that looked just like her. The mom, who thought the daughter was just joking around, laughed it off and said, let's go. While heading to the register, the daughter shook her mom and said, that's the lady who told me she wanted a daughter just like me pointing at a mannequin. The mom laughed, thinking the daughter was still being silly. You know how kids like 
had wild imaginations. Always playing around. While at the register, the daughter had to go to the bathroom. So the mom told her to hurry up. It was only a couple hours down, by the way. While in the bathroom, the daughter texted the mom saying the pale ladies in here who wanted a daughter. The mom, trying to get in a rush back home to her other kids, said, hurry up, we have to go. Stop playing around. 10 minutes later, and the daughter never came out. The mother who was waiting outside the bathroom at this time, rushes in the bathroom to see what the heck is going on. The daughter was nowhere to be found. She even checked the stalls to see if her daughter was hiding, standing on a toilet or something. On one of the stalls, she found her daughter's cell phone on the floor. By the way, if you made it this far in the video, comment down below your favorite fruit. Mine is mangoes. When she checked her phone, this was the last image found in it. Police still to this day have no explanation on what happened to that little girl. Never doubt your kids, y'all. Creepy things caught on camera. This one really freaked me out. Apparently, this worker was working late at night in the factory one night, and while he is working, he's going to set his tools down, and he is going to turn and start talking to somebody. Now, normally, if someone's talking to someone, you're going to see them on camera. In this case, maybe they're off screen. Maybe this is a hoax. But as this video keeps going, you're going to see this worker reach out, to shake someone's hand and it appears as if like maybe there's a camera malfunction, maybe it's not working, but later we find out that this man is talking to his friend, he shakes his hand and he has a full conversation with him, which is what you're seeing right here. But it came to be known that this person that he thought he was having a conversation with, shook the hand and everything, actually was found a couple days later in their house and they had actually passed away. And this was taken after that. A 14 year old died after eating what is said to be the world's spiciest chip. The boy's mother was called to a school when he complained of a stomach ache after taking part in the viral one chip challenge. The challenge features a tortilla chip flavored with two of the spiciest peppers possible, the California Reaper and the Naga Viper. Harris felt better after going home, but he passed out at 4.30 p.m. when he was about to leave for basketball tryouts. While the teen's death marks the first reported fatality after eating the chips, many other children have needed medical attention. I just turned off the lights, that's all. These two little girls are having dinner when one becomes afraid after seeing something in the other room. The little girl can no longer tolerate what she is seeing and stands up to get away. Her little sister is laughing and making fun of her at first, but then she turns around and sees it for herself. Yeah, turn around, turn around. Put it, you gotta listen to me. Turn around, look at me. What's the matter? Can you see it? There is something there in the right corner of the door. It's all fun in games until it happens to me, I guess. There's this very strange video circling the internet of what's supposed to be a very strange creature found frozen in Antarctica. I'm going to show you guys this video. Pay very close attention. Wow, we got something big right there. So let's see what it is. Oh, there is another air balloon. What? I can't, I can't understand. What is that thing? What the hell? Ah! This is a monster head! What well, actually looks like some sort of humanoid creature can be seen in the video. I have no idea if this is some sort of alien humanoid creature or what the heck is this. But I found little information about this video. Check this out. It's really creepy. I just cannot believe my eyes. Guys. Oh my gosh. That's a monster head. Look, that is his eyes, his giant her mouth. That's his head. Or maybe there is a whole body of a monster right under this. We've come to an end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking up to this far. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'm going to see you on my next video, guys.
Bye.